It's that time for the ultimate Linux guide. I've made tons of Linux gaming videos and you've probably seen a lot of Linux gaming videos on YouTube. And if you combine every single one of my Linux videos into one, this would be the one. So I'm gonna be going over video drivers, custom Linux kernels, custom Proton, ACO, wine dependencies, game mode, all the things, just literally all the things. That's what we're going over for in this video. Uh, check the timestamps because there's a lot to unpack, so let's get right into it. All right, here we go. It wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't break down an article. Now, I haven't made a video for the entire past week because I've been working on this article. I wanted to get it just perfect so you can copy paste and get everything done quickly. So let's see if I can get basically two hours of gaming content condensed down to about 10 minutes. So with that said, let's get right into it. Go to ChrisTitus.com and you'll notice the ultimate Linux gaming guide right on the front page. But if not, I'll put it right down here in the actual uh, bottom portion of it and also in the description of this video. So uh, first thing we need to do is enable video drivers, get the latest and greatest as with any op operating system. So from here, we're gonna just open up our terminal and we're just gonna simply copy, paste. And all you gotta do, do that, enable, copy, paste. And this goes, it, I went ahead and added all the triggers, so it'll go ahead and add every single thing, automatically do it. So literally, uh, all the codes have a little copy to clipboard function to where you can just click it. And if you don't wanna see any like the ad or any of the table of contents, just click that on the web page. you get the full. With that done, we can just say, hey, you wanna continue accepting? We'll just say yes. Occasionally you might get an actual prompt, but for the most part, it should just answer yes to everything and install it. So we've just installed our video drivers and now we can move on to the next thing. So next up is gonna be custom kernels. Uh, custom kernels is something that uh, I don't recommend just using one. Uh, never uninstall the stock kernel that comes with your operating system or your distribution because that's just gonna cause problems down the road should something happen or a piece of software not like a custom kernel you want to be able to revert back. So let's just go ahead and install Xanmod here. Uh, we'll go ahead and copy this to clipboard, paste that in. This adds that and it should go ahead and do the update and install it as well. And while this is installing, I put a little graph here uh, from uh, Pharonix and basically it was just kind of showcasing all the different ones. A uh, Xan mod typically comes out a little bit ahead, but I also have some other options here as well. Licorix for Debian based users. I used to really run this most of the time, but I've switched to Xan mod in recent uh, times. And then for Arch based users, if you want to get a hold of this, do the Zen kernel, which is Linux Zen for you Arch based, which is Manjaro, Arch. Uh, there's a billion other distros in Arch, but you get the idea. Anybody with Pac-Man can do the, the Arch-based one. This one is more heavily based on Licorix and not Xanmod, but uh, a lot of them have a lot of similarities. So you usually get a little uptick in performance if you're using this for gaming and desktop usage. All right, it looks like our custom kernel is installed. I will say in the very last bit, if you don't wanna use a custom kernel, but you don't wanna be on an old kernel, I put something called mainline Debian bleeding edge here. And what this one is, is basically the latest and greatest. Like a lot of Arch users get the latest Linux kernel as soon as it's released. Debian usually gets held back six months to a year. If you wanna be on those front lines, by all means, you can switch this over. Uh, again, keep the stock kernel that comes with uh, your thing. Don't go in and uninstall it, but also you can now have the latest and greatest, which if you look here, if I just do a Neo fetch, You'll notice on the NeoFetch, this one is using kernel 5.78. So this is actually the official mainline kernel that I'm running right now, not the stock one that comes with Linux Mint 20. But we just installed Xanmod, so we can actually exit out of here and give it a reboot and come back into here just to see how our custom kernel is doing. So let's go ahead and give it a reboot. Here we go on the startup here, you should see your grub menu. Now you probably don't have something like this with Shodan, but it's probably more of a bland version. If you want something cool like this, I'll put a link up here to how to do Grub customization. I've done that in a past video. But just simply go to advanced options and then you'll get a list of all the kernels that you want. So if you look over here, we have Xanmod, we have the 5.7.8, which is the mainline bleeding edge kernel. And then we have 
5.4, which is Linux Mint's uh, stock kernel that the developers recommend and has been vetted. So with that, we'll select Xan mod. Usually it remembers this after selecting, so subsequent boots will automatically default to this in most cases. All right, back on our desktop here, we'll launch right back in. The very first thing we do on a custom kernel reload, run a Neo fetch, and you can see what you're running. As you can see, we see Xan mod. If you don't have Neo fetch installed or don't want to install it, you can always do uname-sr and you get just the kernel name. So that is the custom kernel. Now we can move on to the next thing. So back in our actual get gamer guide here, uh, again, link in the description, ACO, you've heard about it, you've heard it raved, you, even Linus Tech tics, Tips have covered it and said, hey, this is amazing. It's literally, there's some games that play faster on Linux that are Windows games that play faster on Linux than there are uh, the native Windows experience. So that's how powerful ACO is. However, right now it's AMD only, so very important. First, obviously, make sure your video drivers are up to date, which we've already done. And if you look here, you do get a good performance uptick and you can just see all of these native games that play better. I'm here to tell you a lot of the Proton and, and uh, emulated games will play even better than the traditional old way, which is called LLVM. ACO replaces that compiler. Very easy to enable when it comes to this. So if you go into your terminal again, we'll just go and do a sudo. You can use nano or vim and do etc environment. All you need to do is add ravv underscore perf test equals ACO. This enables the ACO compiler by default instead of LLVM, which gives you better performance. If you have problems, obviously you can disable this, or if you like to just enable it for certain games, you could do this uh, entire line right here. Like let's say you're in Steam, you could do that entire line, just rav underscore perf test equals ACO space and then percent command percent. And this will run just that one game with the ACO compiler. So you can kind of test it out, see what you get. But that's ACO in a nutshell. Now onto the next one, we have Wine. Why would you care about Wine? Well, I like to set up Wine dependencies and all the things that many games use, just so when you go to install games, you're not gonna run into problems. So these are just kind of like the base things that just to make your life easier in the future. So obviously me being Mint 20 here, we're just going to take all of this and add it right in. So we'll just go ahead, paste that over here, let all the install process. I've modified the official instructions to just go ahead and basically not get prompted for anything. If you don't like that, take off the dash Y on the end of these uh, variables. Enter our password for sudo, and it'll go through, grab all these. If the repository is not there, it'll go ahead and add it. It'll do an update for your command, and then it'll install it all automatically. So pretty darn powerful stuff. And now that's it. All of our stuff is done and we're pretty much ready to go move on to the next step. This installs Wine and Lutris, again, with just a click of the button and pasting it all into terminal. So as much people as scared of the terminal, just know this is how powerful it is for just getting things done in literally seconds. Next up is eSync. Almost every modern distribution of today has eSync enabled. You can easily check it just opening up terminal, typing ulimit-hn, and it <laughs> helps if you type it correctly with the space. You'll notice right here, this number. Now it used to say like 4,000 or something really low. This helps game overhead and it helps like compile times and other things, so it's really important. This is not like a low number like 4,000. Uh, a lot of times the guides, like this one on the actual website, I said put it at like about a half a million. This one, uh, the Linux Mint team just said, hey, put it up to a million. Both these are correct answers. Both these are totally fine. Uh, if anything, I'd say the million is probably a little bit better, but uh, you're probably not going to touch it either way. So uh, just make sure it's not 4,000 and eSync will be good and you're, you're going to have less stutters and less compile times. All right, moving right along here, we're going to move on to game mode which basically means that it's gonna max out, remove like the governor. It'd be the same thing as removing a governor on a car. It basically allows all the cores to unlock and you to run your computer at its maximum and making sure that it won't step down anything during gameplay. It's important not to just enable this all the time, uh, but typically they've built stuff into where that won't happen. So with that said, let's get going with it. Uh, again, I'm on an Ubuntu Debian based one, so we'll just copy paste that right into there. With everything installed, just go down to build and install game mode. 
and paste that guy in there. We'll just say yes. All right, game mode is installed, ready to go. If you want to uninstall it, you could just do it right here. Um, obviously to actually make it run, let's just launch into Lutris real fast. And then from Lutris, uh, we can just simply go over into our preferences. And from preferences, we should be able to see this. So uh, I'll enable these two things. A uh, couple other things in here. Obviously we, we already have ACO actually enabled at a global level, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just enable it here as well doesn't hurt. Uh, these are the two things in Lutris I like to change right out of the gate, enabling game mode and shader. I have noticed sometimes game mode makes other games perform worse for some odd reason. If this is the case, just come in here and turn it off. It's as simple as just a tick box. Uh, but for the most part, almost all games perform better with game mode on. But let's say there is like a uh, Path of Exiles, a uh, pretty pretty good one that I like to tinker around with a lot on Linux because it doesn't perform all that well, not well optimized for it. But let's say you wanted to add game mode to here. Uh, obviously, just come back into here. Under game mode, we can just copy and paste this right from uh, this into the Steam launcher option. So I wanted to showcase this as well as it's just something good to do. So then anytime I launch into Path of Exile, it would go ahead and do game mode. So pretty awesome. I actually need to update that. So we'll go ahead and update it. But uh, that's game mode in a nutshell, both Lutris and Steam. Very important you do both. Uh, as far as installing Steam goes, I didn't want to show it because pretty much at this point, everyone can install Steam so easily. Uh, some people get hung up on Lutris. That's why I went ahead and showed its install process. But with that, uh, we're pretty much done with game mode. And last, but certainly not least, custom Proton showed it a million times on the channel, but it deserves another mention. I absolutely love this. Uh, I went ahead and made a little cheat sheet for Proton Updater. So if we just copy that, uh, let's go ahead and paste that guy in there. And this will basically just run and do it. So it says, do you want to download and do this install? We'll just say yes and say enter. This goes out, downloads it all, installs custom Proton, I mean, what more could you ask for? It was really difficult. I made an entire 10 minute video on how to install custom Proton. And here I am installing it in like, what, 60 seconds? All right, and then you can delete installed versions. I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. Uh, but sometimes I like to run like an old version. Sometimes the old, old Protons work a little bit better. But in this instance, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes and say, you know what? I don't want 5.8 anymore. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. We'll say yes to permanently delete that version. Do you want to delete install versions? We're going to go ahead and hit no. And we'll restart Steam. And then it'll relaunch Steam for us. So that's pretty darn powerful. All right, so back in Steam here, um, we'll go ahead and say we want to enable this custom version for Path of Exile. I'm going to first show you how to enable custom versions. Uh, this did pretty much everything for us, but there's one more step we need to do in the system preferences. So we go Steam and then hit Settings. Come down to Steam Play at the bottom and then just make sure you enable Steam Play right here and right here. Uh, go ahead and leave the custom one on uh, the official version, which right now is 5.0-9 um, because we wanna just enable custom Proton for certain titles that we might wanna tweak a little bit more. So using Path of Exile again, we'll just go down to Properties. We already set the launch properties to do the game mode run command, which is great, but now we can force it to use a custom version. So we can actually uh, just do this drop down menu and away we go. We select whichever version we wanna go. I've noticed cer certain games play better on older versions of Proton. Uh, this is getting to be less of a thing, but initially you had all these different versions you wanted to go to, but the latest versions of Proton, man, they're just mm, so good, perfect. But uh, needless to say, I still have like a version uh, 4.21 for some really old games that I use mainly for compatibility. But for this, we'll just go ahead uh, and leave this on 5.9 GE version. And then custom Proton is all set up and good to go. All right, and that is the complete Linux gaming guide or the ultimate gaming guide. I absolutely love gaming on Linux. It has gotten so good. Like. A lot of these steps used to take me 10 minutes and I've literally condensed five or six videos down into this small video because of how easy it's gotten. 
it may look a little more difficult, but with that how-to guide I've set up, the copy pasting, you can get this done in about five minutes to 10 minutes. And if you don't believe me, I did an entire live install of this on Twitch. And I'll put a link down to that video as well so you can easily refer over to it as that also uh, premiered, I think, yesterday. So you can easily refer to that video, watch me do the entire install, which I think that whole video is about 20 minutes long or something when I did it live. And that was me just kind of uh, fumbling around and didn't actually have the full guide done yet. I was still kind of programming it and just uh, inceptualizing, making it easier for you. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the description. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.